Okay, so you've got your tools. Now for this demo, I'm going to be using a Windows machine so I can use the GunApp EXE to test on the same machine that I'm developing my weapon on. If you're on a Mac with a device attached, it's a little more difficult because you have the extra step of copying the content onto the device each time you want to test, but otherwise everything else is the same. I started my setup by downloading the Windows version of GunApp, which is this file here, and I've extracted all the existing mod weapons into the assets directory. As you can see, if I open up the gun list here, every time I press one of these numbers, it will open the corresponding weapon. So let's get started. The very first step is probably the most important thing when working on a weapon, and that is to choose an appropriate existing weapon as a base. Obviously, I can make a handgun or sword out of the existing mod weapons, but I want to do something a little more different to show how flexible the system is. I decided I want to make a toaster weapon today. This toaster will shoot badly burnt toast at anyone I want. So in this case, what weapon should I choose as a base? Well, the lightsabers are a bad choice because they don't move anything like my toaster should move. Let's take a look at Bazinga. Bazinga is a poor base for this because in Bazinga, only the frames change. As you can see, there's no movement in the image, only frames changing. The phaser could work. I do want the toaster to move somewhat like a handgun. But actually, I think the scribble gun here is the best choice in this case because the scribble gun has a spawning particle coming out of the end. And I want toast to spawn out of the end of this toaster towards the side of the screen, just like this. Okay, so now that I've decided on a base, I can take the scribble gun XML, it's called draw gun, and copy it into a new folder that I will call the same as my new asset. Let's call it toaster. And while I'm doing this, I should also take the uh, JSON file and the small image file while I'm at this. These two files are related to how the weapon displays on the menu. Let's rename all these files. Now remember that this is still just a copy of drawgun.xml. Now at this point you should set up your sounds and images to whatever you need so I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so I made my assets and I put them all next to Toaster XML. Notice that I named them all uniquely to my asset, in my case, Toaster. Doing this is important so that my assets don't collide with assets from any other mod weapons or assets that are already inside GunApp. So here I have several images of my Toaster. Let's take a look. These here are for reloading. These are for the shot. I have one image for the particle and I want this toaster to be able to run out of ammo so I made this ammo that will look like an untoasted loaf of sliced bread. When I line this all up it'll look like a like a loaf. Notice that the images for gun app have to be 600 by 400 and that images for particles have to be at any power of 2 and that means uh, 16 by 16, 32 by 32, 64 by 64 or 128 by 128 etc cetera, etc. Cetera. In this case I chose 128. These are requirements related to the internal workings of GunApp and your iOS device. By the way, there are limits to how many total images you can use in a weapon. I think it's like 13 or 14 total. But weapons with many images take longer to load, so it's best to stay away from the limit. Now for sounds, I have this reload ding toaster sound. And this other sound that I have for firing. Now for the reload sound, I made sure that it times up with the scribble gun reload sound so that the animation will still match when I swap one out for the other. But let's hook it all up by modifying the XML. First the images. We just have to swap out the old ones with my new ones. And emitters go inside the emitter section. In this case, it's just called toast. And you want to keep the blend the same on this one because we're going to use alpha transparency just like the scribble gun bullet, which is just an image with some transparency. Now with the sounds, you can see them in the sound section. Same idea. Swap out the old ones with the new ones. Now it's time to set up the animations. 
you can see under animation sections you have different animations here's shot one and here's another animation it's called reload and that should be all we have and it is now another reason that I chose the scribble gun to start with is that it has the same number and types of animations that I want for my toaster weapon a shot and a reload so hopefully I won't have to do much in the next step of setting up the animations let's take a look at the way the weapon is right now in gun app I'm gonna copy these into the assets folder I'm gonna assign my weapon a number so I can call it by just pressing a button here we go the movement is okay but the frames don't really match the bullets are weird and the particle is weird so let's tackle all these things one at a time the first thing is that it has an eject and we don't need cartridge ejecting for this weapon so I'm gonna remove it now and the way I do that is by going into the eject cartridge section and setting the image to negative one and the scale to negative one if you take this off completely gun app will crash so you have to tell it specifically that there's no eject next we have to take it out from the frame that used to call the eject and this can just be deleted let's save it and try it again that's better let's go on to the next thing the next big thing is to to get these images swapping properly so the way that I do that is by going into the frames and each of these frames you see that there's an image being called here in this case image 0 in this case image 2 1 and these correspond to the images up here you can see these have an ID that ID is exactly this this is telling gun app on this frame use the image with ID 0 and on this frame use the image with ID 3 now each frame is 1 30th of a second so 30 frames equals one second to give you an idea of how much time is given to each one of these and that comes out to 33.3 .3 milliseconds for each so I'm gonna take my time to swap these out okay so as I started working on my frames I ran into my first problem look at my reload animation looks pretty messed up okay so one of my frames seems to get stuck in the middle when I reload what the heck is going on well if this happens to you and one of your frames is stuck like this the first thing to check is if you have ammo which I do let's take a look at the XML let's find the ammo place and here it is and sure enough my ammo is using the wrong image it's using image 6 which is just one of the frames this is what image 6 looks like and it's also the same image that's being stuck big on the screen ammo always displays at its actual resolution so an image set to the size of a full frame that's set to ammo will of course look wrong and take up the whole screen this is just because it was left over from the scribble gun and now corresponds to the wrong image so let's fix it it should be image 8 toast ammo let's save it and test much better now I seem to have a different problem the background seems kinda weird on the reload it's black well every animation has the ability to have a background image if you want it to let's take a look at the reload animation it has a background set from the scribble gun sure enough it's using an image that was not designed to be used as a background it's using one of the frames if you want to use a background it has to be 480 by 320 and as I said before all these images are 600 by 400 so let's remove the background by putting negative 1 in the slot and let's test it again nice oh and one thing about these frame numbers here they're really just for your convenience gun app doesn't care if they are in order or if they even exist just make sure the XML syntax is preserved if you change them or copy them around between animations okay let's see if I can wrap up the frame swapping now alright so I think I got it to where I'm satisfied with the animations and again I got to this point only by changing the image parameter on the frame 
Also, I did do some slight tweaking to the images, including moving them up a little bit to frame them better. Now let's fix this particle. It's pretty wrong looking. So to fix it, first I have to look for the frame that's causing the particle to spawn. And it's right here, frame 2. It's indicated by the spawn XML node that is a child of frame 2. So to fix this, I'm going to have to mess with all these values right here. Now it would be a little cumbersome for me to explain what they all do in the video. So we made sure that they're all documented in the wiki. If you go to this page in step 4, look for the section called spawn particle attributes, which is this, the same thing as this. And here the function of every variable is explained. Okay, so I'm going to adjust this now. Okay, so by adjusting these numbers here, I got this sweet toast jumping out. Burnt as toast of fury. Oh, and another thing I had to do was change the frame that was causing the spawn. It used to be frame 2. I moved it to here to frame 5 to time it better with the sound. The timing wasn't right. One thing to know too is that you can have as many different spawn children of frames that as you want. In other words, you can have a bunch of these with different images spawning on the same frame. All right, so let's talk about the ammo. Now, if your weapon doesn't require reloading, you don't need ammo either. Like maybe you're working on a knife or something that can fire continuously forever. And if you want to do that, you can go up here to the ammo section and you can actually just delete all the bullets out of here and change the image to negative one and remove the count. And then you can get rid of the reload animation like this. Just You can just delete the reload animation. Just be gone. Now in this case, I do have ammo and I do want to reload, so I'm going to leave it. Now what if I want to change the amount of ammo that we have? For example, maybe I want this to be 20 bullets because real life bread loaves have 20 breads. Right now it's just 16. I can copy four of these and just paste them here. Then I change the numbers. And most importantly, I have to make sure that I update the count too. It has to be 20 now. And remember it counts from zero. so. Even though it ends at 19, it's 20 total. If I do this wrong, gun app will crash. Now the next problem is that the ammo is not in the spot that I want. These X and Y positions are relative to the top left of the screen. And if I can get the first slice of bread to line up, setting up the rest of the loaf should be easy since I know the resolution of the image since I made it myself. Or of course I can look in my image viewer and it'll tell me the resolution. In this case, it's 16 by 64. And these also have to be power of 2 by the way, but not necessarily square like the particles. So I'm going to adjust these and make it look more like a loaf of bread now. Okay, so I set up the bread. I also changed my mind about how many to have. When I had 20, it was realistic, but it didn't look good, so I went back down to 15. Also, you can control which one of these draw on top of the others by changing the order. For example, the last ones draw on top of the first ones. All right, this is looking kind of nice. Um, by the way, I don't have to restart gun app every time I want to see a change. If I want to test my change right away, all I have to do is press the number that I assigned to the weapon. So you just reset right away. Okay, now let's prepare the JSON file and the toaster small.png so that the toaster will appear properly in the game menu. This is what the JSON file looks like. And right now, the toaster small looks just like the scribble gun. So I'm going to fix this and we'll come back to the JSON. Okay, the small PNG was easy enough. I just put a picture of the toaster in there and kept it at 110 by 77 pixels. Now the JSON file has a couple of settings. The first is the weapon name. Let's put a proper name in there, toaster. Let's put in a proper link to Wikipedia. This is what the browser will go to when you click the information button and the category. Now I think the category for this weapon should be the fun category. To make it appear in the fun category, I have to go to the wiki and look up the index because I can't remember it. So it's here in step five. Uh, fun category is 305. So I'll put that here. And now let's test this thing out on the device. All right, so let's try it out. It should be in the fun category. And first let's try out the information. Sure enough, Wikipedia toaster. And let's try the weapon. Perfect. 
Now we could call this weapon done here, so I'm gonna conclude the video. But if you want your weapon to be as polished as the rest of Gunapp, watch my next video to see how I add some finishing touches.